Hello guys, so in part two you learned about the idle integrated development environment and the Python shell of idle which is actually what you're seeing right now here. So the Python shell of idle is actually just only good enough to write simple lines of code like uh, what you already saw. But as we go along this tutorial series you will see that most of the scripts which can actually perform some meaningful task actually take a fair amount of coding space and involve probably multiple lines of code. So the way to access the coding space for you to write a bit more complex code in idle would be to go to file and new like this and we go to a new file. Now just keep in mind that in a future video I'm going to introduce you to different uh, and famous IDs such as PyCharm, uh, Spider IDE, Wing IDE and Visual Studio Code and the way you would normally deal with each IDE would be slightly different even though the overall concept is still the same. Now during that video we will sort of discuss how to get around each ID and explore the functionalities but, but we're going to keep that for a future video. Alright, so in idle, the coding space that you're seeing right now, it's actually called as the editor window, which you open just by going into file and new through your Python shell. And this actually gives you a blank typing space for you to get started with the compilation process. Now, if I try to type print hello world in here and press enter, let's see what happens. If I type print, just like what we did before, and now if I press enter, you can see that actually nothing happens, just the cursor moves down into the second and third lines. Which was not the case when we were when we were using the Python shell, isn't it? In Python shell, when you just type a line of code and press enter, it actually generates something. So I guess you get the idea that this editor window is something quite similar to a text editor. Something like if you were to use Notepad or Microsoft Word or any other standard uh, word processing software. Now similar to what you would do on a regular text editor, you can even do those things in here as well. Such as let's say if you want to copy and paste this line of code in another line. Let's say you can just simply highlight the thing, press Ctrl C. And if you go a couple of lines down and if you press Ctrl V, you can see that it actually gets pasted. So basically the standard commands which we know from uh, basic word processing software actually work over here as well. Alright, so let me go ahead and get rid of this. So when you're using the editor window, the way to run the program would be either you can simply go over here and you can run the module and it'll ask you to save the program. So maybe I'm just going to go ahead and save it somewhere. I'm going to name this as maybe test script. And when you save, just make sure that you add the extension as .py, which is quite important over here before you save it and you can just go ahead and save this now and when the code runs you can see that it's actually printing the thing out into the python shell from the editor now if i open the editor again and let's say if i type if i leave a couple of spaces like this and if i type something like print something like this and if i press f5 again and press ok you can see that now it's actually printing both the lines into the Python shell. Now if you did notice something, you can see that I actually left two spaces, two lines of empty spaces over here. But when Python actually printed this program into the Python shell, you can see that it actually disregarded all the spaces that I kept left in between. So this is something to keep in mind and we will discuss in the future in case if you would like to actually leave deliberately some spaces in between how to do that but uh, since we are just getting started just make sure that no matter how much space actually you leave in between the lines when you finally print that into the python shell it's actually not really going to care about it but in case if you would really like to leave one space maybe this is one way of doing it you can just pass an empty string so that's actually not going to print anything and now if I press F5 which means we are running the program yeah now you can see that it actually left one space in between well, this might not be actually a nice way of leaving a space according to the Python standards, but uh, but we will dive into those uh, concepts in the upcoming videos. All right, now assuming that we get rid of both the editor window as well as the Python shell, how can you actually open the Python script again? Now, there are multiple ways of doing that. First, let's navigate to the place where we saved our Python script, which is the test script dot py file over here now if you would like to actually check the extension you can even right click over here and if you go to the properties you can see that the extension is dot py which indicates that it's a python file now one way of opening this python file in idle would be just to right click over here and you can go to edit with idle 
and select edit with idle 3.7 and that will bring up the editor window for you and now if you just run you can either go and run it from here or you can simply hit F5 and you can see that once it runs it's actually printing the thing into the Python shell so in that way you actually automatically get the chance to open Python shell as well or there could be another way to open this file let's say if you have just an empty Python shell like this which you just opened like this what you can do is you can go to file and you can open and now try to navigate to the place where you saved your script like this and from here you can simply open this script and that will open up the editor window as well and what you can do is you can again simply go ahead and run this that will print out the thing into the python shell as well so this would be the way to simply run multiple lines of code using python and what we just discussed was how to save a python file and also how to open a python file using idle so that's about it for this tutorial i'll see you in the next one